Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 42 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and a world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lindicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about that the analyst firm Gartner predicts that the Australian organisations will boost their spending on public cloud to 6.6 Australian billion dollars in 2020 and then to 7.7 billion Australian dollars in 2021. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips about cloud computing. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and this is uh, kind of great numbers coming out of Australia as it turns um, they're consuming cloud computing. So it's interesting the way this is moving, which is uh, north quickly. Yes, yeah, certainly is. It really is. It's, uh, it's quite a rapid growth, uh, growth rate, isn't it? So, look, I mean, a great opening question, Dave, is where will the market likely top out, do you think? I think I got a long way to go. I mean, if you look at worldwide, most of the uh, applications that have been migrated to the cloud, they're actually operating in the cloud. Uh, maybe at uh, between 20 and 30 percent, depending on the enterprises out there. And that's all in SaaS, uh, all the other on-demand stuff, the office automation stuff like Office 365 and Google Docs and things like that. So say we're going to saturate it about uh, 70, 80 percent. I mean, that's a huge amount of uh, uh, work uh, to be done between uh, 20 and 30 uh, percent, 70 and 80 percent. So I think that it's going to be a while before it tops out, and probably if, if I'm going to really kind of guess as to when, when it's going to top out, it'll probably be about a trillion dollars uh, in the Australian market. So that means that they'll pretty much be saturated with cloud-based systems by the time they kind of reach a uh, um, saturation point themselves. In other words, it doesn't really make sense to migrate anything else to the cloud. So it's going to be a huge success story, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. It goes back to one of the other shows we we spoke about. It's when when cloud computing isn't actually considered cloud computing anymore, but just a form of computing. It's that level of acceptance, isn't it? Yeah, and I think we're going to see that in most of the markets, Australia included, where it's just going to become baked into what we do. And you know, we saw this with PC-based computing, which was you know new at the time, and we identified it as a separate technology. People were moving in that direction, local area networks. Uh, the rise of the internet and the rise of uh, uh, service-oriented architecture, databases, things like that. And I think we're going to see the same thing in cloud computing. It's going to be you know, known as cloud computing, but we're just not going to talk about it as much anymore. It's basically going to be baked into you know, everything we do. If you look at the R&D dollars that are being spent you know, by the software providers out there, almost 70% of the dollars out there are going toward cloud-based solutions. And, uh, you know, that is, you know, very telling over time. We'll just kind of reach a point where it just doesn't make sense that we call it cloud computing anymore. And I think that's kind of a confusing term as it is, even though we have uh, four shows called cloud computing. Yeah, we'll have to rename our shows. So uh, if you, any, any of the viewers out there, if you can think of any names for our shows, then please write them in the uh, description box below or the comment box, I meant to say, not the description box. But in your opinion then, Dave, uh, you know, traveling the world and, and speaking to lots of organizations about cloud and, and running out cloud systems, et cetera, and solutions, uh, in your opinion, where is a comparative growth part within, you know, compared to Australia? Yeah, I think it's going to have to be United States and Europe. I mean, obviously the numbers are going to be a lot bigger uh, when you consider the European Union and the United States as larger markets, but the percentage of growth and the and the speed of growth um, is uh, very close. I, I do think Australia is probably inching forward in just kind of the innovation and speed that they're getting to stuff to market, and uh, you know which is you know something we talked about on the show a lot. And I just see a little bit more interest, a little bit more aggressiveness in moving into cloud, and a little bit more use. use using technology for the strategic advantages of the businesses. And so you don't have a lot of the folded arm gang like you do in the rest of the world where they're suspicious of cloud computing because security and things like that. They understand those problems have pretty much been solved and they're going ahead and looking to progress and moving in the right direction, leveraging cloud computing for a benefit. You know, the benefit to the business strategically as well as the ability to kind of save on ops costs. And so it's a win-win. So why not at least look at it and implement it in your company and try to see make sure, and, and look at how look at how it's able to return value and I, I think Australia is probably doing that more than anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it leads us on nicely actually, Dave, to your top three or top three tips for the week. So if you'd like to share those, that'd be fantastic. 
Yeah, the first one is watch spending, you know, without a business case. I think that people have a tendency to kind of move toward cloud computing uh, without understanding, you know, what they're re returning to the business. And that's a good way to get fired, but it's also a good way to fail. Uh, so I always ask people to understand what they're doing this stuff for. And in some instances, workloads you know, aren't contraindicated to moving the cloud. It's just something you really shouldn't do. We talked about the saturation point, and that's because we're going to run out of workloads that are viable for the cloud, and that's because they're not able to have a successful business case that's associated with those workloads or data sets. So look at security as you grow your own cloud. You know, what security is going to be for you? How are you going to leverage it? Uh, identity access management has to be systemic to everything you do. We have a tendency to be in a retrofit culture with cloud computing. So in other words, we'll build huge cloud computing based systems, net new based systems, and then we'll retrofit security on top of it. That's not necessarily the way to do it. And then finally, make sure to include training and hiring in your budgets. Um, if there's one thing that kills cloud computing projects quicker than anything, it's the lack of talent uh, who are going to be available and capable of doing the cloud based systems. And so it's one thing to adopt the technology. It's another thing entirely entirely to have people around, they're going to be able to leverage the technology and operate the technology efficiently and effectively. And if you don't have that, it's just not going to work. So it has to be a core component you consider. And many people are just neglecting that right now, I see. Yeah, so true. Talent is is a, a real core component to you know a successful cloud strategy or implementing a successful cloud strategy, So that, should I say. Look, Dave, thanks so much for your tips and thanks for being part of the uh, Australia show this week. Always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> Thanks very much, and enjoy Vegas. You can get back to the machines now. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. Got some money to lose. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. And look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Cloud Computing Australia show. And remember, we've got lots of episodes on YouTube, so please hunt around the channel and find them. There's lots of really current topics out there as well, not only for Australia, but, you know, the rest of the world, uh, sea level management and training. So there's lots and lots of great content out there that David and I do on a weekly basis. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as I've just said and uh, yeah look forward to next week oh and remember to like subscribe comment and share this channel with your friends and colleagues and remember to click the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on any of the uh, future releases and uh, look forward to next week all the best <laughs>